guys, so here we are at Lantier's booth, and what you see in front of me is the Mako, which is their new, uh, newest model. And what makes this aircraft unique mainly is that right there. See, the nose wheel uh, is set to, uh, to be retractable. And uh, it's so cool in the sense that there is no switch to retract that nose wheel. It would just retract by itself. All right, so I'm gonna take you guys, just give you a 360 of the airplane first. But as you can see, it looks it looks very similar to the uh, to the Lantair uh, 4, and this aircraft is supposed to compete with the uh, with the Cirrus and the RV10. Okay, so let's let's go around it. Let's check it out. When we look at style and design, very similar to the Lantair 4, the four seater. Also looks very similar to an RV10 and a Cirrus, which are its two uh, closest competitor in my opinion. But apparently with this aircraft you're supposed to get much better performance for a fraction of the cost. Let's get a shot of the interior here. You know, one thing land here has been, I would say guilty of, may be that the cabin is can feel tight i would say the pilot side which i'm looking at here doesn't seem too tight you have a lot of leg room okay lots and lots of leg room here uh, on both pilot and passenger now the the uh the back on the other hand i'm not sure there's a lot of leg room there it feels tight back there, but you also have a lot of room for for baggage in the back. So, those are some of the things you gotta think about. And then, like I was saying earlier, it's, it's it is a tricycle landing gear. Those two in the back are fixed. This uh, nose wheel right here comes up automatically after takeoff. But more so, same amount of uh, horsepower you get and similar performance. But again, you're not paying the price of a Cirrus for this aircraft. So here we are. One thing I'm big on, again, is the cabin space and how uh, just the, the reach of things as a pilot. And as you can see in the middle console here, you have an armrest which I don't know if it's removable or retractable. But here, your fuel selector, you have a middle control stick. I, I've never flown an aircraft with middle con control stick before, so I really don't have an opinion on it. So I, I don't know if it's more comfortable or better. I believe this is your throttle here, okay? I could be wrong, but this would be a throttle here. As you can see, there's one on each side of the airplane. Uh, this model here is equipped with a Garmin glass cockpit and oh look so cool push to start right there no more keys just push to start okay your vents are on each side one right here two at the top and one on the other side okay the cabin looks very clean very nice and finished Again, it would take a pilot uh, to fly this thing to get a proper review. The main thing I wanted to ask is the design of this cockpit here. I don't think I've seen this. Uh, I think I saw it just recently on a, on a bush cat where you have a middle stick and I'm assuming this is the throttle. That is, yes. Okay. I've never flown an airplane with the middle stick so I can't, I don't have an opinion on it. Okay. So can you tell me how that, What's your what's your opinion on on having middle stick and also what thought went into the design of that having the middle stick? Um, by having the middle stick, you actually get more cabin space by removing the control surfaces on the inside of the. Oh right, cabin. Lancers always have the the side kind of like a side where you have right, two right. side sticks. But by doing so, you actually, if you can see here, this would be about another inch further in had it been a side stick because you have to run the. Okay. Controls down uh, down the side of the aircraft. By doing this, you actually separate the pilot and co-pilot. Normally, if you get in a on a cockpit of a you know low wing aircraft, you're sitting right. a little bit more closer right, together right. to 
So this enables you to have a little bit more space. Um, I have shorter waist, longer legs. legs. Yeah. So I can sit up there and put it as a follow right. line. Okay, so can you do that for yeah. me, please? All right, so he's going to get up there. And how tall are you? So about 5'10". Okay, he's 5'10". We're pretty much the same height. Okay, so for someone 5'10 to sit back here and someone 5'10 fly in the airplane, he's going to adjust his seat. All right, wow, that feels a lot better. Okay, guys. <laughs> I lied. I lied. Okay. Uh, now it's more comfortable look at my headroom here at least a couple of inches so enough headroom uh, and my legs barely touching the seat so i do have leg room here okay and he's 5'10 like i said maybe somebody taller i don't know but we're both 5'10 and we fit in here perfectly i could probably scoot up a little like one more notch but this is this is where i would be okay and I should also mention the back windows. This is pretty awesome. I think a lot of aircraft designers, uh, they miss out on this part. Whenever you carry passengers and you have tiny windows in the back, but they have pretty large uh, windows back here. So that's awesome. He just proved, the, proved the, uh, my theory wrong. It is quite roomy back here. You just needed to move that seat up uh, a little bit. And it's very intuitive design. You only have one. Right. I, I was going to ask about that also. So I see the simplicity of things where you don't have any other knobs you're playing with other than just your power. Power RPM. Uh, oh, okay. RP oh, wow. So let's see. <laughs> so there's an RPM. Mm -hmm. this, had, this is a control. Uh, so this, this, has a function. this is your blue knob. So this okay. would be... So let me get closer to that. See this knob right here, guys? This is functional. So you have your power, and how does that work? So when you're, for example, taking off, you would increase your throttle, and uh -huh. then click it in, gives you maximum RPM. Oh, wow. And then okay. once you're airborne, you can pull back the power and trim your RPM back to whatever settings you And you're you basically getting uh, you get response all the from exactly. the screen. Awesome. Right. Wow. So again, back to the, to the control surfaces, for someone, I would say the most traditional pilots, I train in a, in a, in a Diamond Star where mm -hmm. my stick is here, right. and I'm so used to having my left hand on the, uh, on the stick. Right. So if I was sitting on the left side of the aircraft, I would have to use my right hand now. Right. How would you say is the adjustment for, I would say, the, the average pilot who, who has that? Well, I that? think, for one, you can have either option. You can have the center stick or you can have the side stick when you're building oh, wait. your kit. So, so for this particular... This is an option. Oh. You can go with the... It's standard. an option. I didn't yeah. know that. I thought this was just the... So, um, and then we've had a couple of people go in and, and test fly and I've never heard any uh, problems or any kind of concerns. Okay. Um, as to, you know, uncomfortable or difficult to control the maneuver it's just okay. become intuition all right awesome so my last question uh, other than the obvious that i've already seen i think you guys beefed it up with really cool technology just the the push to start i think that's cool what else would you say sets this airplane apart from its competition one of uh, what i think one of the bi uh, biggest features is not only the um, RPM here being uh, Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that, that though. But uh, this button here, um, okay. believe it or not, is a, a uh, voice command type. So when you're getting busy and you're going from, you know, transitioning between airspaces or tower to control uh, approach, you right. just ask it to do it. So you can uh, push the button, say, tune the nearest tower, and the system will tune itself to the nearest tower or... Uh, oh, so Wow. Okay. So you can ask it, what's my true airspeed, true altitude, and it'll voice command and give you oh, wow. an answer. Yeah. So it won't just do it, it'll, uh, if you ask it, what's my true altitude, it'll say 18,000 feet or whatever it currently is. Um, same thing with tuning the tower or approach or departure control. That's, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, it's a voice command. That's pretty awesome. So there you have it guys, this thing is jam-packed with crazy technology. And what is the price again for it? 127.5 is the kit. Uh huh. And then plus your options and your avionics. Okay, so let's say this model. I've this particular one here, as it sits, you're looking at about 500,000. 500,000. Still, still about half, or maybe 60 percent of what you would pay for a brand new series. So you still get a lot of uh, a lot of bank for the money here. Thank you Absolutely. so much. For Anytime. Showing. I really appreciate it. Okay, guys, there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Peace.